it's my hope that you're very much okay so in this video we are going to do our compulsory book fathers of the nations by paul b vita so you want to pay attention to the end of the video to learn more because reading is one thing and then comprehending is another thing so in today's video sorry we are going to analyze chapter one I'm sure that you read the book to the end, but did you comprehend the information? So that is what you're going to, to do today in this video. Uh, before I go to chapter one synopsis, let us talk about the title, the relevance of the title. But we are going to do it later. Today I'm just going to mention a few things. The title is Fathers of Nations. In Kiswahili is Baba wa taifa. We don't have a Baba. It's Baba wa taifa. Singular and plural. So what does it mean? Uh, let us take our, the example of our country. Fathers of nations actually is the leader of the nation. In our country, Kenya, we have His Excellency William Samoei Arakuto as our father of nation. So, generally, the book is about leadership, leadership in Africa. And if you read the book, several issues have been addressed. One is poor leadership, two, rigging of the election. Uh, even for now in Kenya, we have the opposition leader. He doesn't believe that the other party won. He believes that he won and the election was rigged. So reading of the election is one of the things that is here. And number two, we have leaders staying in the government for the long time, which is related to reading of the election. Let us have an example of our neighboring country, Uganda. Since I know myself, the Excellency has been the president since I was young and now I'm getting old. You see, such things are the ones that are addressed in our book. So in analyzing the book, you have to read it and relate it to what is happening in the contemporary society. We also have the cause of withdrawal of the government. Uh, so without wasting time, we are going to begin with chapter 1, now that you know the relevance of the title. So chapter 1 <coughs> begins, opens at the Seamount Hotel, and we are told that Four strangers arrived at the Seamount Hotel and no one knew each other. Probably they are not going to know each other because they were assigned different rooms in different floors and different wings. So the first person is Karanja Kimani and this is from Kenya, our own country. And Karanja Kimani he is a professor in the Institute of Development Studies at the University of Nairobi. Age, he is about six years old and he is assigned a room in the fourth floor, East Wing. So that is our first. Number two, we have Nkobile Melusi and this one, he has no occupation. He is a comrade and citizen of Zimbabwe. He is given the fifth floor of the south wing. Age is about 70 years old. As you can see, he is old. Does his age mean wisdom? And another question that you might ask yourself at this point, why do they need Nkobile Melusi, a person who has no occupation at the summit, the president's summit? I'm sure if you have, read, uh, you have read the book to the end, you know the reason. Give me your thoughts in the comments. And uh, number three, we have Chiamaka Chineke. At least I know he is your favorite. He is a pastor at the CIA Church Inside Africa. And his age is about 50 years. How young, young as compared to the other ones. Uh, he is assigned a room in the floor of the uh, West Wing. He is about 50 years. The last one is Say Tahir. 
He is my favorite, right? He is young first. He is 40 plus. He is 40 plus. Meaning that he is young and energetic. He is assigned a room in the third floor of the north wing. And professionally, he is an engineer. He was an engineer formerly employed by the Ministry of Defense in, Tip uh, in Tripoli, Libya. So this guy, he has a lot of information about the weapons. You see, he's an engineer in the ministry. He was an engineer in the Ministry of Defense. And being young and energetic, he knows how to use those weapons. So I want you to relate, actually, he is a Muslim, and many Muslims don't take it in a negative way, they're just analyzing the book. They have a lot of information about the weapons, deadly weapons. So those are the four men, and we are told that they are from different countries in Africa, and all of them have suffered in different ways under the leadership in their countries. So they have that pain inside them, and we can say they are against, they can be against their government because of what the leaders have put them through. If you have read the book again, I'd want you to tell me in the comments how each of these men had suffered in their countries. While at the Simon Hotel, the four strangers received a, a call, one after the other. And the first one to receive was Karanja Kemani. And he received that call from a stranger who identified himself as, as the guide. And he said he has an urgent message for him from the ADA, and ADA means Agency for Governance and Development in Africa. And the message was for him to accept him as his guide. And we also told Chineke Chiamaka Sel Tahir and Kobile Melusi received the same call from the same person with the same message. In addition to that, the four strangers received a briefcase and uh, the guide gave them the same combination call. Could you remember the combination lock? Yes, you're right. It's one, one, two, four. The call actually refused to give his identity. From the four strangers, we introduced to other two characters, Dr. Abiola Afolabi and Fiona Mackenzie. We'll begin by Fiona Mackenzie. She is a reporter for the Gambian News. We have Dr. Uh, Abiola Afolabi. I'm going to mention several things about him. And number one, we are told that he is a lecturer or a teacher at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. We also learn that he studied at the University of Harvard in the USA. He is an author of the book Failures of States. And we can learn in the interviews between him and Mackenzie, he was pessimistic about leadership in Africa in the book Failures of State, as the title suggests. The states have had failed. But now she's wondering why he is, he is optimistic about leadership in Africa. And the other thing about him is that he is an advisor to the heads of state. Remember, he is an intellect. He is invited to the summit by the president to be their advisor. Fiona Mackenzie requested to interview Dr. Abiola Afolabi because he is invited to be the advisor to the heads of state. He wanted to have the background or to get the background of the meeting with the foreign heads of state. Through Dr. Afolabi, we get to know that the foreign heads of states will be debating a document called Way Omega. Remember we have Way Omega and later on we'll have another document, the Path Alpha. What is the content of the two documents? What is the difference between the Way Omega and the Path Alpha? We'll come to that. But now we are in the Way Omega document. And Dr. Abiola Falabi 
believes that if this document is adopted, it's going to bring some changes in Africa. One, it's going to ensure that there is no more coups. Number two, there is no more rigged elections. And finally, there is no more foul play. So that is the content of the way Omega, which is going to be debated by the foreign heads of states. So the foreign heads of states are actually they are in Gambia and they came at a cost. The citizens in Gambia were denied some of their rights to ensure that the heads of states are comfortable or are entertained and the cost that they came with Number one, before they arrived, before they arrived, several things happened which affected the citizens. One, checkpoints sprout everywhere. This gave the guards that opportunity to take bribes uh, from the passers-by. Number two, we have roadside kiosks in which families depended for their livelihood were demolished. Now they don't have something that is going to give them their daily bread. And the people who are doing that is the government. Number three, road gets layer of tarmac at the time of maximum traffic. So that is before. And then when they arrived, the worst happened. What happened? All the waters was directed to the new water fountains that were meant to entertain or to amuse the dignitaries. So the Gambians were left without water. Remember water is very basic. So we can see there is poor, poor governance in Africa as depicted by this point. Maximum security was ensured for the foreign heads of state and we have two bodies that was to ensure everything in terms of security was okay and that is the Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Internal Security. In addition to that, we have another ministry, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and this one was to ensure that, uh, to ensure the safety of the visitors and they had two functions. Uh, and one was how to sit the heads of states. Number two, how to accommodate them all at the Pinnacle Hotel. After a long debate, it was concluded that they are going to follow the alphabetical order to sit the president and to accommodate them. We have some other details of how many rooms each a delegation was given. And I'd want you to give me the answer on the comments. So that is the end of our lesson today. So you have learned that fathers of nations means actually the president, the president of the country, the leader of the country. I don't know, we have a woman who is a, a president. Is she a father of nation? That is just a question. In Tanzania, we have Samia Suluhu as the president. She is the father of that nation. Just think about it and give me your thoughts on the comments. I really appreciate it.